In today's video, we're going to be welding a bunch of bungs. And my buddy Mike from Monkey Fab Garage sent me a bunch of these just to make a video for you guys. So if you're not following him on Instagram or watching his videos on YouTube, go ahead and check him out. And if you need any, go buy some from him. I'm going to be going over these and giving you some tips. So this is that cube I welded up a while back. Um, what I'm going to do is weld a bunch of fittings in here. This one I welded a while ago on a positioner. You can see that. I might weld one on a positioner, but... So I'm going to do one over here on the outside. You can see the gap in there. I'll show you that. I'm going to do one of these fittings. two real close together um, basically on all sides and then I'll just weld this one around on here so I'm gonna have 220 amps the machines maxed out uh, it's on AC my frequency is 99 balance 73 Alright, I got them all tacked up. Normally on bungs I just do two tacks because it's usually so flush down there that you don't need any more than that. Just make sure they're going to hold. I try to face all my starts and stops going in the same direction. So like with this, I'll probably stop there in the center so it's kind of hidden. You know, if it's going to be something that's up here, uh, on the far side is where I do my start and stop. And on the bottom of these, um, I don't know if I will on this because it's just messing around. What I usually will do is put a piece of pipe in here that's whatever size this is with a bunch of anti-seize on it. Just make sure you don't get it anywhere near the weld. and Make sure it's not on your gloves that you're welding with. But I'll do that because it'll keep the threads from warping and also it'll give you a point to prop on so you can spin around like this. So when I started, it started wobbling on me. You can see that it kind of moved. But, so after that, I just continued on and kept going until I couldn't uh, make the weld anymore. I was too out of position and the torch angle was too much. So I backed off right there. So now when I start, I'm going to start right here on this edge. And I'm going to let that build up and fill in. And once the toes are the same size as this and it's flown into the root, then I'm going to add a drop of filler and back up into this last ripple and then continue forward from there until I get out of position again and then I'll just repeat it again. There's, here's the tie-in right here. So right about here's where that uh, the end of the weld was. And once I got it going, I backed up. That's where it starts. You can see the uh, frosting from the edge of it. And then I went and did the same thing until I couldn't. Um, my angle was too bad. Now I stop. So now I got about a third left. And I'll try and hit it all in one pass, but I might not be able to. But then I can just come back and fill whatever's left. So right here's the tie-in. Backed up and started. And I made it all the way around. Added um, 
probably three or four drops of filler, you know, and then you taper off. But you can see right here, I came up and nipped that edge. Usually if it's wide enough like this is, I'll keep it down below that edge the whole time, all the way around. It just, I mean, it's not bad, but it just doesn't look as good. So on fittings like this, where it's smaller, that shoulder, I'm gonna burn all the way up onto it. Uh, but I'm gonna do that all the way around. And then like these other ones, I'm gonna stay down below it. But you can also see the difference between a turntable or a positioner and hand done. It's a lot more consistent because you're moving the whole time and once you get your flow set, or not your flow, but your um, puddle size set, you can really just move with it real quick. Another tip is as you're welding, let it cool down. So do one pass, especially on something like this thin. This is eighth inch and these aren't that big and since this is so small it soaks up with heat super fast so you want to do like a pass and stop so whenever you're coming up to do a weld I like to check where my uh, lead is laying and I'll have it either wrapped around my lap or around my shoulder to keep all the weight off my hand and then I'll just do it and make sure this doesn't interfere with it if it does Swap it to the other side and see which way is easier. So right here is going to be my start point. And I'm going to want to keep this tungsten almost flat because right here it's kind of like a butt weld when you're coming around. And then as it gets up here, you're going to want to start coming up and angling your 45 like a fillet into it. So it's kind of tricky, but once you practice it a couple times, you'll figure it out. This one I didn't let cool down, I just went and tried to weld it up real fast. Um, so when you're doing the sides like this, you're using a lot less amperage than in these fillets. Um, the camera that I had positioned on the uh, welder to show you the amperage readout wasn't turned on. This one I did all vertical up on it. You can see right here I ate that lip out because I was at a bad torch angle. So after that first pass I kind of hit my groove and uh, everything started working out after that. But a lot of times I'll have to do vertical up on these because they'll already be tacked into a boat, you know, up in something. So I'll just come run it uphill this side, switch around, run it uphill this way.
All right, so this one I welded coming this way until I got to the stop point. And then this one I went around the other way and welded till I got to the stop point over here. And this is nice, so if you have a big tack over here on this side, you can actually weld from that and then the other way and that'll hide that tack, you know, so that when you're welding over it, you don't have a big old bump on it. So there's those. So what I did was I reached as far back as I could into here, started on the actual side, not in the middle, not melting both together. And then I ran that first one. And when I got to the back side, I just uh, got it to where I could see from the other side and pushed it as far as I could into there. It wasn't connected all the way. And then I did the other one and when I got in there, I came almost straight in and kind of um, tied it all together and made sure it flowed in and stopped there. Uh, the other thing I can tell you about bungs is especially on small ones, the tighter your bead is, so like the um, closer together all your ripples are, the better it's going to look. Uh, when you start spacing them out too much on tiny pipe or bungs, it kind of looks kind of wonky because it almost looks squared off instead of rounded around. And try and start off on bigger bungs so you can see how that one looks a lot nicer because you're going around a lot slower so your angles aren't changing as much. And then when you get into smaller ones and weird angles, you know, it's a lot harder to get in there and do it. So it's all finished up now. We got a bung on every side, two on one. Main thing to remember is that when you get uncomfortable, just taper off and stop. You don't have to keep going. Well, that wraps up this video. I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, I tried to get a lot more footage of uh, the machine amperage, but I kept having camera trouble, so I'll have to work on that. Hit the thumbs up if you like this. Subscribe if you're not and hit the bell. That way you get notified every time I upload one of these videos. Check out my Instagram. It's mostly all aluminum welding. And it's fifth, at 5th Street Fab. And check out some of my other videos. Alright, have a good one.